Welcome to this LabVolt tutorial about the Home Energy Production Control function. Including four specific functions, this video will introduce you to the first function of this unit, the single phase standalone inverter. Due to the complexity of this function, it is suggested to try the boost chopper and PWM inverter from the chopper inverter control unit first to understand the basic circuit used in this function. Once the chopper inverter control window is fully open, select the single phase standalone inverter from the list here. Note that a window may appear. Just do as it says or click OK for automatic configuration. Now, let's take a look at the settings of this function. Status indicates if the function is started or not. Battery minimum voltage sets the voltage from which the function will stop working if E3 reads a value below this to prevent deep discharge of the battery pack. Peak voltage output sets the peak output voltage at the load in percentage of the value of the DC bus here. Output power limit sets the maximum power that the single phase standalone inverter will be able to supply to a load. Output frequency sets the output frequency of the PWM inverter giving the opportunity to supply AC loads of 50 or 60 Hz. Q2, Q5, Q3, Q6 are the transistors used by the PWM inverter. You can choose for each one PWM or on or off for troubleshooting. Here are the DC bus control settings. In fact, these are the control settings of the boost chopper. DC bus voltage command sets the voltage of the DC bus. Q4, the transistor used by the boost chopper. Again, you can choose PWM, on or off. Here you have the start stop button. Just below, the overload light, and here, the three meters to track the duty cycle. DC bus voltage and battery voltage of the function in real time. Just hit the single refresh or continuous refresh button to see those values. Just above those meters is the electrical diagram of the function. Note that E3, E4, and I4 must be connected exactly as shown here for this function to work properly. For more help, you can rely on the show connection button here for a complete connection diagram. Take a moment to look closely at the electrical diagram. The study of a schematic diagram always gives important information about the function you're using. First, here is the DC source, which can be a solar panel or a wind turbine connected to a battery pack. On the other side, you have an AC load. Here is a boost chopper, which is a variable DC-DC converter, bringing low DC voltage to high DC voltage. Just after, you get the PWM inverter, which has the ability to convert DC voltage to AC voltage. Combined with a low-pass filter at the output, you obtain a variable AC power supply both in amplitude and frequency from a wind turbine or solar panels. That's what this function is all about. Pay attention to every connection upon starting the function. Let's see what we get. The yellow curve here is the output voltage of the function, and the blue curve is the output current running through the AC load. By looking at the numbers here, we can calculate the expected output voltage. In fact, the boost chopper is requested to maintain a DC bus of 200 volts using the battery pack of 48 volts, which is the case judging by this meter. Now, in the PWM inverter settings, you can see that the peak output voltage asked is 85% of the DC bus, which equals 170 volts. Since the output voltage of the PWM inverter is AC voltage, we get a peak voltage of 170 volts and an expected RMS voltage of 120 volts at 60 Hz, as asked here. A quick look at the value here on the scope shows us that the function works pretty well. You can then change the DC bus voltage command or peak output voltage percentage here to obtain various outputs of AC power. Don't forget that the battery minimum voltage and output power limit settings must be set to adequate values to protect the battery pack from any overuse. That's it for the single phase standalone inverter. 